I mentioned in my last video, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, redo some of the tests using some genuine RD16 HHF1s, which uh, these two are. I got these uh, from RF parts. So uh, I had to build a couple of little, little adapter boards. Uh, the RD16s have a different pinout configuration that goes uh, gate, then source, then drain, as opposed to the gate, drain, source of the RF 510s and 530s. So anyway, I've got this uh, all in circuit here. Uh, obviously, it's not ideal with these kind of flying leads everywhere, um, but hopefully they won't affect the test too much. Um, so what I'll start to do, um, the first thing I have to do is kind of arrive at a, a quiescent current for these two. And what I've read online, and I'll include a link to a few of those sites, is you need at least a 500 milliamp quiescent current to... Uh, for these guys uh, to get them in into a linear region. So uh, I've got another power supply here which I'm using to, uh, to, uh, to, to get that. I mean obviously with two of these I'll need an amp of uh, quiescent current uh, which is starting to get pretty high. Uh, and one of the things I've had to do is uh, replace this R7 here with just a, uh, with just a short. Uh, I couldn't get the uh, adjusting this, I couldn't get uh, uh, enough quiescent current through the RD16s. Uh, but anyway, uh, so let's move on to some testing. I've got this all back in circuit and uh, let's have a look at some of the results. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is uh, check input impedance of the uh, uh, of the RD16 uh, HH combination. So using the mini VNA again to check that. Um, and let's go and have a look at uh, what that is. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the input SWR. So the, the, this graph uh, is uh, uh, pass-through mode, so uh, from the input straight to the output. Uh, let's uh, fire off the amplifier. We should get uh, a different trace here now. Uh, let's let that settle down a bit. And just as a note, the uh, quiescent current through the uh, uh, RD16s is a little over 500 milliamps each. Um, and uh, so that looks like it's settled down. So let's uh, have a look at that. Okay, so I've put a little marker at uh, 7 uh, megahertz so we can see where that is. And you can see the uh, input uh, SWR is uh, around about 1.3 to 1. So uh, pretty good. Uh, interestingly, the, uh, the SWR um, is a lot uh, flatter over the sort of between 1 and 30 megahertz as compared to the IRF 530s. Uh, if you recall, the IRF 530s were up towards uh, uh, nearly uh, 2 to 1 uh, at 30 megahertz, whereas the high here is uh, 1.6 to 1. Um, just as a note, the uh, actual input impedance is, just looking here, 62 ohms at 7 megahertz. So it does spike up to uh, uh, around about... 68 ohms at uh, at about 8.2 megahertz, uh, but but all in all, pretty much a pretty much uh, kind of a, a an acceptable SWR across the band uh, without modifying that uh, R6 uh, uh, in, uh, input resistor. Anyway, let's move on now to do some uh, amplifier testing. Okay, so like before, let's start with a uh, simple CW test. So this is unamplified. And you can see there uh, around about 42.4 volts peak to peak. Let's turn the amplifier on. Do the same thing. Uh, and as you can see now, uh, we're only getting 68.8 volts peak to peak. Uh, so that's with the same uh, four watt input signal and with the IRF 530s, we were getting around about 114 volts peak to peak there. Um, so that's definitely different behavior. Um, and that's kind of why I'd started with the uh, input SWR measurements to see if uh, uh, there was something different about the input SWR, the RD16s. Um, but there isn't. Um, so uh, now I have played around with the uh, bias. Um, a little bit. Uh, like I said, I'm currently running with about uh, 500 milliamps through each of the RD16s, uh, and I did read that that was uh, an appropriate uh, bias level for 
uh, for linear operation. So interesting stuff. Uh, let's move on to a single sideband test now. Okay, so let's have a look at the two-tone output uh, on the oscilloscope now. Uh, it's the same setup uh, that I did before, and I'll include a link to the previous video. Um, so let's transmit. You can see there that is the uh, unamplified signal, uh, looking good as before, uh, around about 32 volts peak to peak. I'm actually um, uh, this is now two watts of input. Uh, I've moved down from the CW test. So let's turn the amplifier on. Transmit again and let's have a look at that signal in the oscilloscope. As you can see, the output is quite different uh, than, the, um, uh, than the, uh, out, the output we got with the IRF 530s. There's definitely a different uh, trace going on there. Um, we'll see uh, when we get to the spectrum analyzer uh, what different uh, harmonic components are in there. Uh, but just another note, the amplified signal is 55.2 volts peak to peak. Uh, and with the same 2 watt input on the RF 530s, we we're getting around about 88 volts peak to peak. So again, kind of continuing that pattern of uh, uh, a decrease in the uh, in the output uh, power for for the same for the same input power. Anyway, let's move on to having a look at uh, the trace on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so here we are on the spectrum analyzer. Let's uh, fire off the signal. Turn the amplifier on. Do that single sweep. Let's turn it all off again. Uh, so as you can see, uh, quite a different sort of uh, set of, let me just move this over a little bit, so I'm missing out the left-hand part of it. Quite a different set of harmonics. If you recall on the IRF 530s, uh, this harmonic that was between the two primary signals was the most prominent. Uh, with the RD16s, we now have these two outside uh, components as the most prominent. Now they are around about, if you have a look here, around about 25 dBs down. So somewhat improved over the uh, RF 530s, but again, um, there's a, a significantly decreased output power. So interesting stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to have a think about uh, what potentially could be causing uh, that reduction in output power. Kind of my assumption uh, was that the um, RD16s could at least get up to uh, 16 watts each, uh, all around about 30 watts in total. Uh, I guess that assumption's not correct. Now I have had a look at a, a, a few different things. Like I said, I did play around with the uh, with the bias voltage uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, I am taking that um, guidance to uh, to uh, 500 uh, uh, milliamps through uh, through the RD16s. Um, I did reduce that and uh, you know that didn't uh, that just uh, changed the harmonic content and reduced the output power. Um, so not quite sure what else uh, I need to play around with here. Um, it's not the um, the input um, impedance of the uh, RD16s doesn't seem to differ significantly from the input impedance of the RF 530s at least through my measurements. Um, because obviously that could cause a difference in, in output power if you've got a different uh, input impedance. So that's not it. Um, I, I have tried varying the, um, uh, the amplifier's input uh, voltage um, and it didn't seem to make much difference uh, also. Um, so interesting stuff. Anyway, I'll post this video. Um, if you have any thoughts on, uh, you know, um, those RD16s, I mean, perhaps this is the expected result, although it does, uh, does seem a little strange, to me at least. Um, anyway, I'll post this and I'll continue to do some uh, kind of follow-up uh, measurements and experiments in coming videos. Catch you all later.